Now, back to our problem. Is our VC in this problem a function of Z? If it is function of Z, that means we're taking account of acceleration. But in our problem, we neglect the acceleration. So we have to assume this one is, is done by assumption. Assume to have no acceleration effect. VC is not function of Z. All right? So if we have only one single component, VZ, and VC is function of only, of only one variable. The shell supposed to look like what? Something I wrote there. Remember, we will set up a small piece of our system in, in the whole picture here, and then that, is, that piece of system is called shell. We will take a balance around the shell, and then expand our shell to cover the whole system. So first of all, our shell is supposed to look similar to the whole system so that integration can cover the whole system. It will make no sense that our shell, if our system is cylindrical, our shell cannot or should not be a rectangular box, right? Otherwise, it cannot be integrated to cover the whole cylindrical system. So it is more proper that our shell will be cylindrical as well. But cylindrical shell can have different or several options. For example, your shells can look like this. This is the thickness delta R. This is the length L. This is one option for your shell. Okay? Your shell can look like this. With the thickness of delta R, thickness in this direction, delta Z. Okay? Your shells can look something like this. This is delta R. This is delta theta, and this is delta z. Or even your shell can look like this. This is delta theta, fixed length of r, perhaps r like this, and fixed length of l. So if you have which one is the most versatile? You know versatile? Which one can be used the, the safest way to use it? It will be this one. Because this one cannot, can never get wrong. Because it is the most common, it's universal. Okay? But if you choose this one, you need to integrate with respect to R, theta, and Z. That's not uh, simple. On the other hand, if you choose this kind of shell, bear in mind that you have to integrate with respect to R and Z. If you choose this one, you integrate with respect to R only. Okay? If you choose this one, you integrate with respect to theta only. Which one is correct? Which one is not correct for sure? This one, right? Why? Because normally, we will assume that velocity within the shell itself is supposed to be uniform. So, if our velocity is function of r, that means it's supposed to change with respect to r. But within this piece of shell, here and there, they're supposed to have the same velocity. This is in contrast to our facts. So that one is wrong, for sure. If I use this one, is it wrong? It is comply to our um, observation. Like, within the shell, velocity 
is not a function of theta. Okay? It allows velocity to change with respect to R. Is it okay to our system? It allows the velocity to change with respect to Z. But this one is unnecessary for our problem. Because in our problem, velocity is not function of Z. Okay? So therefore, if you choose this one, the answer will be correct. But the, the problem will be a little bit more complicated. So instead, choosing this one is correct. Velocity can be allowed to change with respect to R. And it does not change with respect to Z and theta. Okay? Or you can say that the other rule of thumb would, would be our shell is supposed to be perpendicular to the, I mean, the, the, the thin size of the shell supposed to be in the direction whereas we have velocity gradient. So find in the picture which direction that our velocity change. So right now velocity change with respect to R. That means our shell is supposed to be thin in that R direction. In other direction, it can be long. Okay? So if our shell is thin in our direction, and in other direction would be fully, I mean, the d dimension of the shell in other direction rather than R can be extended to the size of the system. So therefore, in Z direction, it can be L. In theta, it can be 2 pi. So it looks something like this. OK? So our shell supposed to be located somewhere like this, with the thickness of delta R and the length of L. And if I cut down the whole system in half, you see this picture, OK? Center located and axis, C axis pointing up, downward like this. Once you set up the shell system, correctly, once you determine this one already, the next step would be trying to set up equation of balance, momentum balance. And momentum balance is consisting of two parts, or three parts, input, output, and force. Okay? For input and output, let's say we have in minus out plus sum of force equal to zero at steady state. The input and output supposed to be determined according to the flux. And momentum flux, the, the flux itself can be divided into two parts. Molecular part plus convective part. Right? And flux here can be determined using phi. Molecular part is tau plus pressure times delta. I mean, the pressure would be, would be taking account of only in normal direction. This is molecular part. And then convective part would be rho VV. OK? Let's determine which one is not 0, starting with rho VV, which is easier. We have, we will have rho VR, 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 V theta, VR, VZ. Okay? We already determined we are and we say that to be zero. So therefore this one zero. 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 Okay? V theta zero as well. V i is zero. V theta is zero. So only this one is not zero. And V C V rho V Z V C should be a part of V 
cc, right? So for sure, phi cc will not be zero. For molecular part, molecular part can be determined using Newton law. And Newton law looks something like this in co um, cylindrical coordinates. Let's determine each one. First, tau rr. Is it zero? At first, if right now we are zero, and then for liquid, it is incompressible. I said that this one becomes zero for incompressible fluid, and that would be um, proved later in chapter three. Okay? So therefore, tau rr is zero. Tau zeta zeta, v zeta is zero. Del dot V is zero, so this one is zero. Tau Z Z, is it zero? V Z is not zero. However, V Z is not function of Z, so the whole thing here becomes zero. Okay, this term is zero, so tau Z Z is zero. Next, is this one zero? Yes, because V Z is zero, V R is zero. So both terms would be zero. Next one, is it zero? V Z is not zero, but it is not function of zeta. So the whole thing here becomes zero. V Z itself is zero. So this one is zero. Last one. Vr is zero. V zeta is not. And it's not function, I'm sorry, it is function of R. So therefore, this one is not zero. So although you have scary um, equations, there's a lot of them, but majority of them will become zero anyway. Okay? So that means in this case, we will have momentum in z direction because we have only v z. And therefore we have z momentum. And z momentum is consisting of three kind of fluxes. Phi, R z, theta z, and z z. Okay? R z is not zero. Theta z, this one is zero. This one is zero as well. So therefore, phi theta z would be zero, right? So this one is consisting of three parts. R z, theta z, z z. All of them will flow in z momentum. So they are all fluxes according to z momentum. And we know that phi r z is consisting of tau r z plus rho v z v z. V R V Z. Tau R Z here is not zero already. So this one must be kept. For phi theta z. Phi theta z is considered of two parts. Tau theta z, which is zero. And then rho V theta V C, which is also zero. So this term become zero. And then tau Z Z. It is consisting of two parts, tau rr, I'm sorry, tau zz here, which is zero. Oh, it is consisting of three parts, because this is normal direction. It must have tau zz, pressure, and then rho vz vc. And we determine rho vz vc is not zero, so this one must be kept. Okay? So let's look into the balance. 